Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Hamna and I share content connected to the creator, creativity and his beautiful creation, which is you, me and this magnificent universe. I was reading this book and um, it's so profound, so deep and so connected to my soul that I felt like what if there are people out there like myself who are on a journey to know more about who they are, who their creator is, and how can we dive deeper within our being and learn from this beautiful master who has written this book. So it's called The Inner Life of, and it's by Hazrat Inayat Khan. I'm going to just read it and share insights as I go um, these videos are going to be something that I'm doing completely out of passion about um, this book and um, let's see how it goes for all of us. I hope it brings you some kind of clarity and connection with your own soul as it has for me. So let's begin. Bismillah Rahman Nirahim. The preparation for the journey. The inner life is a journey, and before starting to take it, there is a certain preparation necessary. If one is not prepared, there is always the risk of having to return before one has arrived at its destination. When a person goes on a journey, and when he has to accomplish something, he must know what is necessary on the path and what he must take with him in order that his journey may become easy and that he may accomplish what he has started to accomplish. The journey one takes in the inner life is as long as the distance between life and death, it being the longest journey one ever takes throughout life. One must have everything prepared so that after reaching a certain distance, one may not have to turn back. The first thing that is necessary is to see that there is no debt to be paid. For every soul has a certain debt to pay in life. It may be to his mother or father, his brother or sister, to his husband or wife or friend or to his children, his race or to humanity. If he has not paid what is due, then there are cords which, with which he is inwardly tied and they pull him back. Life in the world is fair. Life in the world is fair trade. If one could only understand it. If one knew how many related in some way or whom one meets freshly every day. To everyone there is something due, and if one has not paid one's obligations, the result is that afterwards one has to pay with interest. This is the inner justice which is working beyond the worldly justice, and when man does not observe that inner law of justice, it is because at that time he is intoxicated his eyes are closed and he really does not know the law of life. But that intoxication will not last. There will come a day when the eyes of every soul will be opened and it is a pity if the eyes open when it's too late. It is better that the eyes are opened while the purse is full, for it will be very difficult for the eyes to open at the time when the purse is empty. To some, consideration is due, to some, respect, to some, service, to some, tolerance, to some, forgiveness, to some, help. In some way or other, in every relationship, in every connection, there is something to pay and one must know before starting the journey that one has paid it and be sure that one has paid it in full so there is nothing more to be paid. 
Besides this, besides this, it is necessary that man realizes before starting his journey that he has fulfilled his duties, his duty to those around him and his duty to God. But the one who considers his duty to those around him sacredly does his duty to God. One must consider before starting on this journey whether he has learned all desired de, uh, learned all he desired to learn from this world. If there is anything he has not learned, he must finish it before starting the journey. For if he thinks I will start the journey, although I had the desire to learn something before starting, in that case he will not be able to reach his goal. The desire to learn something will draw you back. Every desire, every ambition, every aspiration that he has in life must be gratified. Not only this, man must have no remorse of any kind when starting on this journey and no repentance afterwards. If there is any repentance or remorse, it must be finished before starting. There must be no grudge against anybody and no complaining of anyone having done him harm. For all these things belong to this world. If man took them along, would become a burden on the spiritual path. The journey is difficult enough and it becomes more difficult if there is a burden to be carried. If a person is lifting a burden of displeasure, satisfaction, discomfort, it is difficult to bear it on that path. It is a path to freedom and to start on this path to freedom, man must free himself. No attachment should pull him back. No pleasure should lure him back. Besides this preparation, one needs a vehicle, a vehicle in which he journeys. That vehicle has two wheels and they are balanced in all things. A man who is one-sided, however great his power of clairvoyance, clairaudience, whatever be his knowledge, is yet limited he cannot go very far, for it requires two wheels for the vehicle to run. There must be a balance, the balance of the head and the heart, the balance of power and wisdom, the balance of activity and repose. It is the balance which enables man to stand the strain of his journey and permits him to go forward, making his path easy. Never imagine for a moment that those who show lack of balance can ever proceed further on the spiritual journey, however greatly in appearance they may seem to be spiritually inclined. It is only the balanced ones who are capable of experiencing the external life as fully as the inner life, to enjoy thought as much as feeling, to rest as well as to act. The center of life is rhythm, and rhythm causes balance. On this journey, certain coins are necessary also to spend on the way. And what are these coins? They are thoughtful expressions in word and in action. On this journey, man must take provision to drink and eat, and that provision is life and light. On this journey, man has to take something in which to clothe himself against wind and storm, heat and cold. And that garment is the vow of secrecy, the tendency to silence. On this journey, man has to bid farewell to others when starting. And that farewell is a loving detachment. Before starting on this journey, he has to leave something behind with his friends, and that is happy memories of the past. We are all on the journey. Life itself is a journey. No one is settled here. We are all passing onward, and therefore it is not true to say 
that if we were taking a spiritual journey, we have to break our settled life. There is no living a settled life here. All are unsettled. All are on their way. Only by taking the spiritual journey, we are taking another way, one which is easier, better, and more pleasant. Those who do not take this way also will come to the end. The difference is in the way. One way is easier, smoother, better. The other is full of difficulties as life has no end of difficulties from time to time you have opened your eyes on this earth. You may just as well choose the smoother way to arrive at the destination at which all souls will come to arrive. By inner life, we mean a life directed towards perfection, which may be called the perfection of love, harmony and beauty. In the words of Orthodox, directed toward God. The inner life is not necessary in an opposite direction to the worldly life, but the inner life is a fuller life. The worldly life means the, limit, the limitedness of life. The inner life means a complete life. The mystics who have taken a direction quite opposite to the worldly life have done so in order to have the facility to search into the depths of life. But going in one direction alone does not make a complete life. Therefore, the inner life means the fullness of life. In brief, one may say that the inner life consists of two things, action with knowledge and repose with passivity of mind. By accomplishing these two contrary motions and by keeping balanced in these two directions, one comes to the fullness of life. A person who lives the inner life is, an innocent as, is as innocent as a child, even more innocent than a child, but at the same time more wise than many clever people put together. This shows as a development in two contrary directions. The innocence of Jesus has been known through the ages. In his every moment, in his every action, he showed himself to be as a child. All the great saints and sages, the ones who have liberated humanity, have been an innocent, have been as innocent as children, and at the same time wiser, much more wiser than the worldly wise. And what makes it so? What gives them this balance? It is repose with passiveness. When they stand before God, they stand with their heart as an empty cup. When they stand before God to learn, to unlearn all the things that the world has taught them. When they stand before God, their ego, their self, their life is no more before them. They do not think of themselves in that moment with any desire to be fulfilled, with any motive to be accomplished, with any expression of their own, but as an empty cup that God may fill their being, that they may lose the false self. Therefore, the same thing helps them in their everyday life to show as a glimpse of the quiet moment of repose they had with God. They show in their everyday life innocence and yet not ignorance. They know things and they do not know. They know if somebody is telling a lie. But do they accuse that person? Do they say, you are telling a lie? They are above it. They know all the plays of the world. And they look at them all passively. They rise above things of this world which makes no impression on them. They take people quite simply. Some may think that they are ignorant in the world lives, that they take no notice of things that are of no importance. Activity with wisdom makes them more wise because it is not everybody in this world who directs his every action with wisdom. There are many who never consult wisdom in their action. 
There are others who seek refuge under wisdom after their action. And often it is then too late. But the ones who live life, but the ones who live the inner life, all direct their activity with wisdom. Every movement, every action, every thought, every word is the first thought out, is first weighed and measured and analyzed before it is expressed. Therefore, in the world, everything they do is with wisdom. But before God, they stand with innocence. There, they do not take worldly wisdom. Man often makes mistakes either by taking one way or the other, and therefore he lacks balance. He does not come to touch perfection. For instance, when he takes the activity in the path of God, he only wishes to use his wisdom there in the path of God. Also, he wishes to be active where he does not need action. It is just like swimming against the tide, where you must be innocent. If you use your wisdom there, it is the greatest error. Then there are others who are accustomed to take as a principle the passivity with which they stand before God in their innocence. And as they wish to use the same principle in all directions of life, which would not be right. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and it brought you some insight and what it is that we need to do as we journey within towards our spiritual path. The journey to spiritual path is all about letting go of the attachments and distractions that hold us back from living a life led by soul. Most people live their life through their mind, through what it is that their physical needs are. Give them the physical needs and they feel happy. When you are on a spiritual journey, happiness is not something that you look for. Happiness is something that you know is available to you at all times, in every single moment. For happiness is being present in this moment right now. Being who you are, just the way you are. Because there is no right or wrong when God writes. When God writes, he writes beautifully, perfectly. And so if you are on a spiritual journey, going within yourself, the one thing that you are being reminded through this passage that I've just read is to let go of that who you were. Not worry about that what you will become, but know that in this moment, you are enough to go deep within your soul and to rise from the inside out and hopefully your light will shine bright up to the skies, up to the heavens, connecting you to your creator. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, send me a message and I'll share the next part, next chapter soon with you. I love you all. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye for now.